Okay, today we're going to talk about medians and altitudes and their points of concurrency and their special names and theorems for their points of concurrency. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the median of a triangle. The median of a triangle is the segment from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. What that means is, if I have a triangle here, that I'm going to take from a vertex, I'm just going to call it vertex A, I'm going to drop a segment to the midpoint of the opposite side. When I do that, because what does a midpoint do? Exactly, it makes the two pieces congruent. So here, BM is congruent to MC. So now we're going to extend that and say, okay, now we have what we call a centroid. A centroid is the point of concurrency of the three medians of the triangle. And yes, you need to know the vocabulary. So here we have our triangle from above. We said, okay. The centroid is the point of concurrency for the three medians. So, if I drop that median from A, which I just did, and that didn't do a good drop there, but that's okay. These two are congruent. So now I come to, to B. I drop a median to the side. These two pieces are congruent. Now I come to C. I drop the median, and these two pieces are congruent. That's what a median does. So the centroid is this point of concurrency of the three mediums. Which just means if they gave you a question that said P is the centroid of the circle ABC, then you would need to know that these two pieces are congruent, these two pieces are congruent, and those two pieces are congruent. You'd be finding bits and pieces in your homework for that. Then we talk about an altitude. An altitude is the perpendicular segment from an angle to the opposite side or to the line that contains the opposite side. I'm purposely drawing an obtuse triangle. So, think back to when we were finding the area of this triangle. And you know that area is one half times base times height. Well, when you're trying to find the area of this triangle, you would see that there would be a dotted line extending this side, and you'd see a 90 degree drop. A 90 degree drop. We'd say, hey, that's the height of the triangle. It's from the vertice to the base of the figure. With that, you will always find, by the way, um, that's how you always find the height of any of your polygons. It's always where the perpendicular drop is for how tall he is, and he's always dropped to the base. So with that, that is the altitude. That's all an altitude is. It's just that perpendicular drop to the base. That's all it is. Then you get the fancy name orthocenter. Orthocenter is the point um, at which the lines containing the three altitudes intersect. So now, if I took these and I dropped an altitude from this side, which again, I'd have to extend the side and do that, and then I dropped it from this side here, again, it would be the point where the three altitudes connect as my orthocenter. And I could do that if you really want to see it, real quick. I'm going to have to extend the lines in a second. These are harder to see. So right here would be the orthocenter. And he is like the perpendicular bisector. 
he will be outside sometimes, depending on my triangle. An obtuse triangle, he will be outside of the triangle. Um, if it was an acute triangle, he's inside again. And we're going to write that down in a second to organize all that like we did the other day. Um, but yeah, because he's a perpendicular drop, like my perpendicular bisector, then he will he can be in various locations. Everybody else is inside. Now, <clears throat> theorem 5.8 says the concurrency of the medians of a triangle. So what this is telling us here is that the medians of the triangle in intersect at a point. Okay, that's what concurrency means. This point actually has a mathematical relationship. It's two-thirds the distance um, from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I'm going to draw this before we do it in the picture here. I want to just draw it right here for a second to show you what's going on. It's saying, okay, if I, I have this centroid in the center of my circle, okay, because that's my point of concurrency. So here's a centroid. And it's saying, okay, I'm just going to make it P for centroid. Don't ask me what. All right, so I drop from the angle to the midpoint of the other side. So these two pieces are congruent. That the theorem says that, hey, from the angle to this centroid, mathematically, it's two-thirds the whole distance. This is one-third the whole distance. The distance, obviously, is one whole. So two-thirds of it covers from the angle to that centroid. And that's what it talks about here. It just says the medians of triangle ABC meet at P so that AP is two-thirds of AE, BP is two-thirds of BF, and CP is two-thirds of CD. And that's all it's saying. So if I told you that the whole distance is 9, Sometimes it's easier to do the fraction math. Sometimes it's easier to think, well, 2 thirds of 9 goes 3, 3, and 3, so it's 6. You can, can kind of reason some of that out a little bit for the whole thing. And our last theorem for today, which we'll play around with that in a minute, um, it says that here, the concurrency of the altitude. Just like I told you, the altitude has no properties whatsoever. All he is is a 90 degree drop. So the lines containing the altitudes of a triangle are just concurrent. They just meet. That's all they do. There's nothing fancy about the altitude at all. So here it'll say lines containing AF, BE, and CD meet at what point? And that would be point G. That's it. That's all they do is meet at a point. They do nothing else. Nothing fancy with that whatsoever. All right, so now we're just going to do some problems relating to this. Some math, yay math. And then we're going to talk about the chart on the bottom. All right, so it tells us right here that it says in triangle G, um, G, uh, uh, FGH, M is the centroid. Okay, that's important. M is the centroid. And GM is 6. Find ML and GL. Well, what do we know if it's the centroid? We know that from G to M is two-thirds that whole distance. So if I'm trying to find ML here, well, he's one-third of the distance. So if, if this is 6, then what's one-third of it? You're right, ML has to be 3. Now, you can do that either in the process of your head or you can say, hey, basically, um, GM is two-thirds of the whole distance. So you would have to find GL first. But basically, C, um, no, CM, hold on. GM is two-thirds of GL. It's two-thirds of the whole distance. So 6 is two-thirds of that whole distance. So now when I do the math, which means I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so these cancel out, multiply by the reciprocal, 9 is GL, which is what we have to find as well, GL. So 9 is GL. So if the whole distance is 9, the whole distance, GL, minus the piece here we have GM, is going to give us 
ml, which then is 3. So either way you work it is fine. You can work it mathematically or you can work it reasoning. Um, depends on how good you are with your fractions, kind of. It says, okay, now let's suppose FM is 10. So now FM here is 10. Find MK and find FK. All right, good job. I'm going to do it mathematically for those who like to say things mathematically, and then we'll talk about it reasoningly. Why? FM is two thirds of the whole distance FK. So 10 is two thirds that whole distance. So again, I can multiply by my reciprocal. So 15 equals FK. So then FK minus FM equals MK. So 15 minus 10 equals my MK, so MK is 5. Or if he's 10, he's 2 thirds the whole distance, so half of 10 is 5, so he's 5, he's 10. Either way. However, it makes sense for you to get it correctly. All right, the second thing here is just weird. And there's actually a formula, and I don't know when you, you learn this formula. Um, it will not be on the test. It is in the homework. It's one of those how do you do things. But it basically says that I have these vertices. Here's these points. Find the coordinates of the centroid. There's actually a formula you can use for this. And as I said, I don't know if you're doing it in the homework. If you are, here's the formula. Um, but it's kind of the same thing. When you're trying to find, the centroid is made up a bunch of medians. And to find the midpoint, which is what medians are derived, derived into, a bunch of midpoints, we know that to find the midpoint of two points, we can just say x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2, because we have two points. So with the centroid, I have three points. The formula works the same way. It just says x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3, y1 plus y2 plus y3 divided by 3. It's a formula. You can Google it. You can find it. Um, it just makes it much shorter. So if I'm going to try to find here the, um, the vertices of the centroid, I can just say, okay, it's going to be 1 plus 4 plus 7 divided by 3. And then it's going to be 2 plus 6 plus 4 divided by 3. So that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 divided by 3, which is 4. 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So this would be the point of my centroid on this vertice. Um, not something you have to memorize. It's more just good knowledge. And I don't think it's on a test or a quiz or on anything. The only thing different about it is it's good knowledge. You may have one question about it on your homework. All right, we want to find the orthocenter of this triangle. And these are the things that we were talking about the other day with our perpendicular bisector. If I have a pretty little acute triangle, then it's always going to be inside because the three orthocenters, and we don't have the acute triangle here, but if I have a nice pretty little acute triangle, and I drop an altitude, because that's what the orthocenter is. I drop an altitude, and I drop an altitude. My orthocenter is going to be on the inside of the triangle, which we're going to talk about down here in a moment. If I have a right triangle, it changes it up a little bit, because I'm dropping 90-degree angles. Well, dropping the 90-degree angle from this one is obviously the 90-degree angle. It's a 90-degree right triangle. Dropping it from this vertice, obviously, it's the same thing. Dropping it from this vertice makes it hit the other side, but then right here, that's my orthocenter. So my orthocenter actually sits on the triangle. Now she's on the right angle. And this is the obtuse triangle that we were talking about before. That here, if I'm going to drop that 90 degree angle, 
We did each one in a different color, so here we go. If we're going to drop that 90 degree angle, I'm going to have to extend to the side. I'm just going to draw a little bit longer. If I'm dropping the 90 degree angle this way, I'm going to have to extend the side over here. This is hard to do in my head. And I'm going to extend this side and drop the 90 degree angle this way. My ortho center is outside. It's the same property as my, my uh, perpendicular bisector because with a perpendicular bisector, you're, again, you're dropping right angles. Same thing, same idea. We're going to come back to this proof in just a second because I want to come down here. This is what we're talking about, um, pulling it all together. Um, well, actually, we'll pull it all together last. We'll come back and do the proof. We'll come back and do the proof. All right, so we're on this little proof right here. It says, prove that the altitude to the base of an isosceles triangle is the median. Well, here, what do I know about this triangle? Well, I know these two sides are congruent. Which means what? I know that AB is equal to BC. That's given. All right. If the two sides are equal, then what makes angle A congruent to angle C? Exactly. My base angles theorem. All right. Hey, look what I got. A little reflexive action. Hey, what do I have now? Well, first of all, I didn't need my reflexive action because that's not a theorem. But I do have this angle here because it's a right angle. So I could have had angle angle, angle, side. I didn't need this right here. That was my mistake. It makes it a bad property, a bad theorem, and we don't have that theorem. It's no longer, it's not a math theorem. So the triangle is congruent to the triangle because of angle, angle, side. And then now, here, if we're talking about it being the median, we're talking about AD equaling DC right here, which now, because my two triangles are congruent, I have AD equal to DC are congruent, actually, because of the corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent. So you might see a little proof come in, because that's what the median does. We did not need the reflexive because he would not have been a property we could use. But I saw the reflexive and I went with it. Sorry. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about before you start playing around with all the stuff, this chart right here. See these big, big stars? You have to know this whole chart, exactly how it looks, minus the drawing for your quiz. You are going to replicate this right here. So I will know if you study for your quiz because you are putting this chart on your quiz. So we're not going to do the drawing category because, well, nobody cares what it looks like. I don't want to draw. So we're not going to draw. We've drawn on all of our papers we've had so far. I just don't want to have to redo the chart. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to summarize what you need to know that we've gone over these last two days. First of all, points of concurrency. So the first thing, the perpendicular bisector. What do we call the point of concurrency? Exactly. He's the circumcenter from day one. With that circumcenter, we talked about where those points of intersection are. We said the perpendicular bisector, because he's 90 degree angle, and the altitude have the same properties. So here, when is the point of intersection inside the triangle? When I have what kind of triangle? Exactly, it's my acute triangle. When was the point of intersection on the triangle? Exactly, he has my right triangle. And when is my point of intersection outside the triangle? Exactly. He was my obtuse triangle. All right. Now we're going to talk about the angle bisector. The angle bisector. With it being an angle bisector, what did we call the point of concurrency? Excellent. He was the in center. 
All right, so because you're dropping it from the angle each time, because you're bisecting an angle, were we ever outside the triangle? No, we said that the first day. It is always inside my triangle. It is never on the triangle. It is never outside my triangle. And remember, the angle bisector, bisector and the median have the same properties. Why? Because of the fact that you're dropping it from the angle each time. So, the median, what do we call his point of concurrency? Excellent, he's the centroid. And again, he has these same properties. He is always inside the triangle, never on the triangle, never outside my triangle. And then the altitude, we said, has the similar properties of my perpendicular bisector. All right, but what did we call his point of concurrency? Exactly, he's the orthocenter. And he has the same properties. Remember, I said he is the same as the altitude. They go together. So just like we drew a number 3AB in my little drawing off to the side, the acute triangle, he's inside. The right triangle, he's on. He's on a different spot than the perpendicular bisector. He's on the hypotenuse, if you remember, and he's actually on the right angle, but that doesn't matter. And then obtuse triangle. You have to know this chart. I'm literally taking this chart, plucking it off this paper, throwing it on your quiz. No drawing. But you need to know what properties occur and what the names of the various points of concurrency is. Because as I've told you, the question's going to say, blank is the centroid of this triangle. So you need to know that two-thirds applied to my centroid and one-third from my centroid down. Blank is a perpendicular bisector. Well, if he's a perpendicular bisector, we know that when he drops, the two bits, he's got a 90 degree angle and the two pieces are congruent because he bisects it. Angle bisector, that from the point to the side. You need to know and it will tell you. Because remember, with the angle bisector in our, our, in our pretty little charty thing, the little side pieces are all congruent. But in my perpendicular bisector, from that circumcenter to the angle of each one of them is congruent. They're, they're congruent in different spots, just like we talked about that first day in class. All right. Well, you're going to do some practice and pull it all together on a worksheet. The worksheet is similar to the quiz and some of the different types of questions on this material. Use your chart. Use each other. Use Ms. Camarena.